Teachers, hopefully you've had a lot of fun for your first week with your new iPad Pro. And as promised, I want to give you a few tips and tricks about how to use an app on your iPad Pro that really makes your iPad into somewhat of a mobile smart board. That app is actually Notability. It is a $10 app. Um, we'd love to help pay for it, but unfortunately, if you're logged in into your own Apple ID, you have to purchase it yourself because you will be the long-term owner of um, the app. The app looks like this, but before I go to it, to Notability, I want to point something out. Um, I am actually projecting right now through the AirPlay, and you get to AirPlay by doing the top right-hand corner. I rub my finger down, and it's this portion of the screen right here that if I touch that, I can see all the available screen mirroring devices. I've actually chosen the screen mirroring device that goes to my laptop using an app called AirServe. It's only nine bucks and it might be a good workaround in the meantime if your screen beam's not working um, for me to project to my laptop, which is then plugged into the big screen TV, or in your case, it could be plugged into the projector in your classroom. Um, when I do this, I actually have the aspect ratio of the iPad screen show up on the big screen TV with the same aspect ratio. So here you can see behind me, um, that I've got a lot of dead space. Here I get a big, beautiful 16 by nine aspect ratio of the big screen TV. And unfortunately, the aspect ratio of an iPad is not the same. So it, it results in a lot of dead space. You see all the, the blank spots on the left and the right. Um, when you're trying to make something as big and as beautiful as possible in the front of the classroom, you'll wanna fill the screen. And Notability, this app actually does that. When I click on Notability, it's an app that recognizes that it's being displayed to the screen. And it says, oh, this is a 16 by nine dimension screen. So it matches that and it gives me a different layout on the iPad than what is being seen on the screen. So I click on a new note and you'll notice that what's showing on my iPad screen and what's showing on the big screen behind me, those two things are different. Um, it's taking just the portion of the note and filling the whole screen with it. So everything on the top and bottom of my iPad screen up here and down here is not visible to the participants, which is great. Um, then I basically have a whiteboard and in its most basic sense, I can do anything I'd, I'd like to, um, like I would do on a whiteboard, but it's now mobile. So of course, I'm already gonna be teased by the math department for my poor handwriting. And now I'm writing at a 60 degree angle on this thing, so it's gonna be really bad. But I can write on here, whatever I'd like to, and it get, is going to show up on the board behind me. So here you can see on the board behind me that it fills the whole screen with white. And now it says the hello class that I just wrote. On my screen, it's a little busier than that. I've still got the name of the note I'm doing. I've got all these tools on the top, um, but the kids don't see any of that. It's just nice and clean. I may write it and go, oh my goodness, I chose blue and I wish I'd chosen something else. I can, using this tool up here that's got the um, scissor icon, draw a quick, um, circle around it and gives me that marching ants um, motif there. And from that, I can click on it and actually hit style and I could change colors. I could also change sizes by pinching and, and things like that. I could change my orientation. I can move it all around like you would do on a, on a smart board. Um, that's really useful when you've gotten some bit of your text and you want to move it to somewhere else. It works really, really well to just draw a circle around it and then move it where you want to. You might even want to draw a circle around just some of it. Maybe I just want to move the class part and maybe put that underneath the hello, just like that. Um, I may even um, want to, again, change the orientation of it, change the size of it, and um, break different parts of this around so you've got the ability to move things anywhere you'd like to. Now notice, I'm currently on this cut tool up here. Um, I can switch back to writing again and I'm still on blue because that's what I actually originally wrote it with and put whatever I'd like to there. But to make this really speedy, you have the advantage with these new Apple pencils to do a double tap. So notice that I've got this right here. When I do a double tap here, it's gonna toggle back and forth between, oh, I'm not doing a very good job of it. I'm gonna double tap here and it's gonna toggle back and forth between my last tools. So watch that carefully. Double tap, double tap. It's really cool when it works. You double tap and it goes back and forth between your things. Why is it not working? I do this all the time. I swear I do. Well, you double tap it and it will go back and forth between those two 
um, most used things. I usually do it between writing and the eraser tool because you'll be writing and then you realize, oh, I want to erase something really quickly and you'll erase that one part of it. So it's a great feature for that. Um, you can see I can do handwritten things there. I can also do shapes really basically and quickly. So I want to draw a triangle. I'm going to draw a sloppy triangle, then I'm going to hold it. Notice it quickly makes a triangle for me. I can move that triangle around anywhere I want. I can change where the vertices go. Um, like I did before, I can hit the style and I can actually change what color it is. I can even change the thickness of it. So there's a lot you can do on the fly with um, the shape that you just made. Maybe with my um, triangle, I want to put a circle in. I draw that quick circle. I want to do a square. Um, so I've got all, uh, that's more of a rectangle, but I've got all of these different features I can do really quickly. Um, some have really liked the idea of being able to do their handwritten notes. I'm going to try it one more time and get to switch it to, um, to text. Same, same trick, same tool. I can double tap on my Apple Pencil and get it to switch over to the um, scissors so I can draw a circle around it. From here, I can also write not just the style or duplicate, cut, copy, but I can do convert to text. And this just proves how good my handwriting is because the computer had no problem seeing that says hello class. So I can hit convert selection and it's just made that into text. I don't really use that a lot, but I mean, if it's something you uh, like the idea and want to, you're welcome to. If you want to just go straight text, I can click up here on the um, text box and, and anywhere I tap on here, I can begin typing just like I would anywhere else, okay? And you can put all your text and things like that on here. Now, that's what, some of the great features to it. If I wanna erase things, I've got a couple options. Again, you can usually double tap on your Apple Pencil and it will toggle between the last two things and those are the two I go back and forth with a lot. Um, so I'm on my eraser tool right now. When I'm on my eraser tool, it will actually erase everything that's a contiguous line. So on the smiley face, I only have to erase this part and it's gonna actually remove the whole thing. Um, because my hello is in cursive, if I do any of this, it's going to get all of everything but the H gone. So sometimes that's really convenient and you want that to do that fast. Sometimes it's really inconvenient. Um, if you want to do just part of it, you can also click on that. Instead of doing whole, switch it to partial. And now I can erase just part of the H. I can erase just part of the circle. So I've got options like that. Now, if you want to be really quick with erasing, you can also go back to that scissors icon. You draw a box around everything you want gone. And you can simply um, click on it and hit delete and it all goes away. So there's lots of quick things you can do with that. Now, the other most convenient thing I like to do with this when I'm teaching a class is to be able to have the documents the students are working with put right on the screen at the same time as, um, as they're working on it. I can do the same thing. So here I have an example of maybe the worksheet I've just printed out for the kids. And I passed it out and I want to have a copy of this ready to go to have up on the, on, on the screen. Um, to do that, you're actually going to touch this little icon right here that just says plus, and I'm going to choose to do a document scan, as you can see right there. So I click on document scan. This is what Ms. Wall taught me. I didn't know about this one until she showed me. So I'm going to um, actually put that paper on the desk in front of me, and then I go up to um, put my camera over it, and I know you didn't see that really well, but what it did immediately is it drew a box around it, and it said, you wanna take a picture of this? And I said, yes, take a picture of it. It did it automatically, and then I'm gonna say insert that as a PDF. So here I have that document that a moment ago was, you know, just as a piece of paper, and now I've got it in Notability. I also got Notability right under all the other stuff I was working on. So I can come down here, and maybe this is exactly what the students have been given and, and you want to model a little bit how they're going to fill it out, you can show them as you go and say, guys, make sure you put your name right at the top. And you can model that while you're walking around the room on your own piece of paper. Today, guys, is 10, 12, 20. Make sure you get that written in better handwriting than I'm doing. And we are in grade eight. So right there, I've got it all filled in. We can write down, <laughs> of course, this is our problem solving for our um, classroom behavior. So you might not want to do this specific activity with your class but it gives you an idea of how you'd be able to model this for all of our students. I am modeling with great handwriting. So I write this as I'm walking around the room and kids are seeing it full screen on the, the screen behind me, okay? So that works really well. Another one that might work really well is maybe you don't have it as a piece of paper document. You still have it as a Word document, a digital document, a PDF document, or what have you. 
If it's already there, it's it's even easier. You don't even have to take a picture and it becomes an even cleaner thing. I'm gonna go into my files here. This is part of my Mr. How documents of when I was teaching. This is for my math folder. I used to use something called the sieve of Eratosthenes. It's a great thing that helps kids be able to distinguish between primes and composites and factor, things like that. So here's a document that I actually used to um, print and I'd have kids cut them into, into four so they could each share them and have a miniature version of it. To get this in there, all I should have to do is either send it straight to Notability or anything you can print on your iPad. If you click print, it'll open up the document and give you a print preview. And if it gives you a print preview, you can actually pinch to expand and it's just made it into a PDF document, which is Notability's favorite. So now it's a PDF document. I can simply click on that and it was right there, say, open this in Notability. Um, it will usually default to whatever your last note was, which is probably where you want to go. If you don't, click on add to another note and it will let you pick from the notes you've done. But I'm gonna click on that right there, hit import, and um, then I need to go back over to Notability, which it should have made that document right at the bottom, and it did. So I'm seeing it with all these bells and whistles and these things that I can control and the students, of course, are seeing just a nice, clean version that fills the whole screen. So on mine, I could be even showing kids, hey, you're going to go through and I actually want you to, um, let's do a highlight. I want you to highlight on your, on your um, paper anything that happens to be a multiple of both three and two. So I go through and say, ah, oh, you know, oh, that was a mistake. Six is a multiple of three and two. Twelve is a multiple of three and two. Um, 18. So anything I'm asking the students to do, I can model beforehand by doing it right on my notability on the screen here. So those are just some super basics of how your iPad Pro plus this notability app um, can really work as somewhat of a pseudo um, smart board and even better, a mobile smart board to let you walk around the room and to be able to display all the things you'd like to on the screen and um, have kids follow along with you. Hopefully that was helpful and as concise as we could make it. You can rewatch it if you want to get to see some of those um, parts again, but we wish you luck. Thanks everybody.